Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Intermediate. Welcome, welcome back. Welcome to Intermediate Class 10. Intermediate Class 10. Already 10 classes. Wow. Okay, so we're going to start, as always, with a review of what we saw in Class 9 yesterday. Okay, so we don't have any, we don't have any uh, questions today. Nothing. Nothing came in. So remember, if you have any questions, log on on the internet to www.bauganingles.com Go into your account. I assume you're a subscriber. Go into your account and you can ask a question and we will answer your question. And then I take the, the questions and I address them on the air so that everyone can benefit from your questions. So we'll start today with a little review of what we saw in Class 9 where we were talking about the verb to know. In the past. So, answer my questions. Did you know I was here? Yes, I knew. I knew you were here. I knew. So, the pronunciation is new, just like nuevo. New. New. Some people say new, and some people say new. New. Almost as if it's N-U. New. And some people say new, which is a fine difference. Can you hear the difference if I say new and new? Some people say it one way and some people say it the other and it doesn't matter. Take your pick. Pick whichever pronunciation you like, new. Okay, so did you know I was here? Yes, I knew you were here. I knew you were here. Did you know I had a new car? Yes, I knew you had a new car. Did he know I was in a new company? Yes, he knew you were in a new company. Did you know that the new models were better? Yes, I knew that the new models were better. Okay? Now, answer me. Did you know the answer yesterday to my questions? Did you know the answer? Yes, I knew the answer. Very good. You knew, are you sure? Did you know the answer? Yes, I knew the answer. Did you know who I was when you first heard my voice today? Did you know who I was? Yes, I knew who you were. Or in the negative, no, I didn't. So using the auxiliary verb, no, I didn't know, infinitive, I didn't know who you were. Did you know the question yesterday? Yes, I knew the question yesterday. Did you know his name? Did you know his name? Yes, I knew his name. Did you know who he was when you saw him? Imagine, you walk into the bar, and there he is, Alberto Alonso. Did you know who he was when you saw him? Yes, I knew who he was. He's all over television. Of course I knew who he was. <laughs> did you know why he did it? Yes, I knew why he did it. Did you know why I taught? Yes, I knew why you taught. I knew why you taught English last year, Kyle. Did you, did you know why I taught English last year? Well, I taught English last year because I'm an English teacher, and that's what I do. I enjoy it. Did you know the difference between them? I saw some twins. I saw some twins last week. Did you know the difference between them? Yes, yes, I knew the difference between them. It's difficult to tell the difference. Distinguir, to tell the difference. We say it that way in English. It's like contar la diferencia. We say to, to tell the difference. Can you tell the difference between Coke and Pepsi? Can you tell the difference? Did you know the difference when you tried them yesterday? Yes, I knew the difference. Did you know why we came? Yes, I knew why you came. Did you know where he went? Yes, I knew where he went. Okay, now we had this, this idea of about to. A punto de, a punto de hacer algo. So, I am about to do something. Ask me what I'm about to do. 
Kyle, what are you about to do? Well, I'm about to pick up my pen. I haven't done it yet, but I'm about to do it. I'm about to pick up my pen. I'm about to pick up my pen, and I'm about to write my name. So here I am, picking up my pen. And now I'm writing my name. Yes, I'm writing my name. I'm about to stop writing. Now I've stopped writing. I'm about to put down my pen. Estoy a punto de. I'm about to put. About to plus infinitive. About to. Again, I'm using my Canadian accent. About to. An American would say about to. About to put down my pen. Are you about to review your notes? Are you about to review? Good idea. Y yes, I'm about to review my notes. Ask me. Ask me if I'm about to go home. Kyle, are you about to go home? No, I'm not about to go home. I still have to stay for a little while longer. I'm not about to go home yet. Ask me if I'm about to take a trip. Si estoy a punto de, de hacer un, un viaje. To, now, notice I say to take a trip, not a travel. Remember the difference between trip and travel. Travel is a verb. Trip is a noun. Okay? I take a trip. I go on a trip. I travel. I travel a lot. I take a lot of trips. Do you take a lot of trips? I take a lot of trips. I take a lot of trips because I travel a lot. I take a lot of trips because I'm a traveler, un viajero. Travelers take a lot of trips. They travel to many different places on their trips. Okay, I hope you understand this difference because after teaching 7,000 hours of English class, I have heard this mistake hundreds and hundreds of times. So please don't confuse trip and travel. I think I'm about to change the topic. Estoy a punto de cambiar el tema. I'm about to change the topic. I'm about to change the topic because I think it's about I, I think I think I'm about to review something new. We are about to see the word of the day. I was about to eat lunch when Alberto called me. He was about to tell me the good news. Now I am definitely about to change the topic. We're about to look at the word of the day. So let's do it. Word of the day. All right, our word of the day. Our word of the day today is Infravalorar, the verb. Infravalorar, <laughs> the verb, which is a difficult word for me to say in Spanish, I must admit. In English, we say underrate. Underrate. I love, for example, ACDC. They're one of my favorite musical groups, and their early albums, I think, are underrated. They're very good. They're good albums. They're underrated to underrate. Underrate. And we say this as one word, underrate, underrate. So the R's go together, underrate. It is underrated. It's an underrated album. He's an underrated player. He's better than they think. Right? It's great to find underrated players because you can sign them to your team for cheap, not very much money, and you get great value because they play well. Okay, let's move on. Here we are in class 10, and we're taking a look at shall, but this time in the third person. Shall we start? Shall we start the exercise? Yes, we shall. So I can tell you what you want to do, and then you can, you can respond saying shall. So you want to go. Now, in plural, shall we go? Yes. Shall we go? You want to bake a pie for the dinner party. Shall we bake a pie? Imagine my, my brother and I. Shall we bake a pie? Yes. Good idea. Shall we clean it? Yes. We shall clean it. Shall we clean it? You want to clean it. Shall we clean it? You want to make it. Shall we make it? Shall we make it? You want to drive there. Shall we drive there? You want to make cookies for Kyle. Good idea. Shall we make cookies for Kyle? Yes. Okay. You want to build one. Shall we build one? Shall we build one? We need a new table. Shall we build one? 
Imagine, we need a new table here in the, in the radio studio. Well, shall we build one? We can work together. Shall we build one? Yes. You, you're thinking maybe, maybe we should buy one. Well, shall we buy one? Shall we? Shall we? Infinitive. Shall we buy one? No problem. You want to do the laundry. Not make the laundry, but do the laundry. Shall we do the laundry? Shall we do the laundry? Yes. Good idea. You want to wash the clothes. Shall we wash the clothes? You want to study hard. Shall we study hard? You want to do what the teachers say. To learn. To learn as much as possible. You, you think it's a good idea to do whatever the teachers say. Shall we do what the teachers say? Yes. It would be a good idea. You want to study all the vocabulary lists. Shall we study the vocabulary lists? Very good. Very good. All right. Vocabulary of the day. All right. Yes, it's time for the vocabulary of the day. We're going to take our, a look at our five words of vocabulary. Aperitivo. Aperitivo. Appetizer. 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 Gratificante. Rewarding. Rewarding. Y no digamos rewarding, pero rewarding. It was a rewarding experience. Dar la enhorabuena. To congratulate. To congratulate. Congraju, ju, congratulate. To congratulate. Congratulations. You've won the prize. I'm here to congratulate you. Congratulations. The verb to congratulate. Más lejos. Farther. Farther or también further. Farther o further. La clase alta. La clase alta. Upper class. Upper class. All right. Very good. Very good. Okay, now moving on to the final section, the last of our class. We're going to practice a structure here for saying when things happened. Hace un par de semanas. Hace un par de semanas. A few weeks ago, or a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, I got a haircut. A couple of months ago, I visited my family. A couple of years ago, I went to New York City. Hace un par de años, a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, okay? We can also practice here, remember following along in your student guide, with the phrasal verb to fall over. And we also have to get on, to get on the bus, for example. Remember, we get on the bus, then we get off the bus. We get on transportation that is usually mass transportation or public. We get on the bus. We get on an airplane. We get on the train. We get on a boat. Okay? So we have the phrasal verb to get on. And we had to break. Romper. To break a bone. And remember, we, we break things like bones. And we break machines. Machines can break. But when you say romper with papel, we say to tear. I tore the paper. I tore my shirt. To tear cloth, tela, to tear cloth or to tear paper. Romper papel, romper tela, to tear. And we had the verb to cut, to cut yourself. So again, a couple of days ago while I was jogging, I, I fell. I fell over. When I was jogging, I fell over. My brother fell over a couple of years ago when he was skiing and hurt himself. I got on a bus a couple of hours ago. Did you get on a bus this morning? Ask me if I got on the metro yesterday. Ask me. Kyle, did you get on the metro yesterday? Yes, I got on the metro yesterday. Did you get on the bus a couple of hours ago? Yes, I got on the bus a couple of hours ago. Did you break a bone a couple of months ago? Yes, I broke a bone a couple of months ago. Ask me if I've ever broken my arm. Kyle, have you ever broken your arm? No, I've never broken my arm. 
Ask me if I cut myself a couple of months ago. Did you cut yourself a couple of months ago? Yes, I did. Very good. A ask me again. Kyle, did you cut yourself a couple of months ago? Yes, I did. Ask me if I cut my finger. Did you cut your finger? Yes, I did. When did I do it? A couple of months ago. Hace un par de meses. Did you cut yourself a couple of months ago? I don't know. Did you? It's terrible when you cut yourself. I cut myself in the kitchen. I was cutting vegetables, and I cut myself. So I'm using the reflexive pronoun, I cut myself. It was painful. Okay, do you remember the word of the day? To underrate. Infravalorar. To underrate. That was our word of the day. Maybe it's an underrated word because we do use it fairly often. I think I think the the, the verb to underrate I think is itself is an underrated word. So I'm using it like an adjective there. It's an underrated word. And we're fully out of time. We're completely out of time. So thank you so much for listening. Remember to tune in again for the next show and if you have any questions, email them to us through the website. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>